Within nations occupied by the Axis powers in World War II, some citizens and organizations, prompted by nationalism, ethnic hatred, anti-communism, antisemitism, opportunism, self-defense, or often a combination, knowingly collaborated with the Axis powers. Some of these collaborators committed war crimes, crimes against humanity, or atrocities of the Holocaust. Collaboration has been defined as cooperation between elements of the population of a defeated state and representatives of a victorious power. Stanley Hoffman subdivided collaboration into involuntary, reluctant recognition of necessity, and voluntary exploitation of necessity. According to Hoffman, collaborationism can be subdivided into servile and ideological. The former is deliberate service to an enemy, whereas the latter is deliberate advocacy of cooperation with a foreign force which is seen as a champion of desirable domestic transformations. In contrast, Bertram Gordon uses the terms collaborator and collaborationist respectively, in reference to non-ideological and ideological collaborations, the term collaborator has also been applied to persons, organizations, or countries that were not under occupation by the Axis powers but that ideologically, financially, or militarily, before or during World War II, supported Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy, or World War II-era Imperial Japan. Topic. Collaboration by country Topic. Albania After the Italian invasion of Albania, the Royal Albanian Army, Police and Gendarmerie were amalgamated into the Italian Armed Forces. A fascist Albanian militia was also formed and in the Yugoslav part of Kosovo they established Voluntari or Kosovars, a volunteer militia of Albanians from Kosovo. Ethnic Albanian elements of the Italian armed forces participated in the Italian invasion of Greece, and German-led Axis invasion of Yugoslavia. After the capitulation of Italy, the Germans stepped in and established more collaborationist units such as police volunteer regiments and a national militia. In annexed Kosovo, the Germans established the Kosovo Regiment out of Bali Kombatar forces. In April 1943, Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler created the 21st Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Skanderbeg first Albanian manned by Albanians and Kosovar Albanians. By June 1944, its military value against the Albanian and Yugoslav partisans was considered poor, and by November 1944 it had been disbanded. The remaining cadre, now called Kampfgruppe Skanderbeg, was transferred to the Prinz Eugen Division where they successfully participated in actions against Josip Broz Tito's partisans in December 1944. The emblem of the division was a black Albanian eagle. <laughs> Australia At least four, and possibly five, Australian prisoners of war in Axis custody volunteered for the British Free Corps BFC, a Waffen SS unit. Three of the four men whose identity is known were members of the 2nd Australian Imperial Forces 232nd ND Battalion, and the other was a merchant seaman. Following the war the three soldiers claimed that they had joined the BFC as part of attempts to escape from German custody, and the merchant seaman stated that he had been given a choice of either signing up for the Corps or being imprisoned in a concentration camp after a relationship with a German woman was revealed. One of the soldiers and the seaman were convicted of aiding the enemy and imprisoned after the war, and the other two soldiers were not punished. Topic. Belgium Belgium was invaded by Nazi Germany in May 1940 and remained under German occupation until the end of 1944. 
Political collaboration took separate forms across the Belgian language divide. In Dutch-speaking Flanders, the Vlaams National Verbond Flemish National Union or VNV, an authoritarian party and part of the pre-war Flemish movement, became a major part of the German occupation strategy and VNV politicians were promoted to positions in the Belgian civil administration. VNV's comparatively moderate stance meant that it was increasingly eclipsed later in the war by the more radical and pro-German Devlag movement. In French-speaking Wallonia, Léon de Grel's Rigsist party, a pre-war authoritarian and Catholic fascist political party, became the VNV's Walloon equivalent, although Rex's Belgian nationalist stance put it at odds with the Flemish nationalism of VNV and the German Flamenpolitik. Rex became increasingly radical after 1941 and declared itself part of the Waffen-SS. After the German invasion of the Soviet Union, Rex helped support the creation of a military unit to fight alongside German troops on the Eastern Front, the Walloon Legion, and a similar Flemish Legion was created in Flanders. Both began as formations in the German Regular Army but would eventually become part of the Waffen-SS. Although the pre-war Belgian government went into exile in 1940, the Belgian civil service was left in place for much of the occupation. The Committee of Secretaries General, an administrative panel of civil servants, was created to coordinate the state's activities and, although it was intended to be a purely technocratic institution, has been accused of helping implement German occupation policies. The Belgian police have also been accused of collaborating during the occupation, especially in the Holocaust in Belgium. <inaudible> Burma The Japanese invasion was assisted by Burmese nationalists known as Burma Independence Army, who hoped for independence. They were later transformed into Burma National Army as the armed forces of State of Burma. Minority groups were also armed by Japanese, such as the Arakan Defense Army and the Chin Defense Army. <laughs> China The Japanese set up several puppet regimes in occupied Chinese territories. The first of which was Manchukuo in 1932, followed by the East Hebei Autonomous Council in 1935. Similar to Manchukuo in its supposed ethnic identity, Mengjiang was set up in late 1936. Wang Kemin's collaborationist provisional government of the Republic of China was set up in Beijing in 1937 following the start of full scale military operations between China and Japan. Another puppet regime was the reformed government of the Republic of China, set up in Nanjing in 1938. The Wang Jingwei collaborationist government, established in 1940, consolidated. These regimes, though in reality neither Wang's government nor the constituent governments had any autonomy, although the military of the Wang Jingwei government was equipped by the Japanese with planes, cannons, tanks, boats, and German-style Stahlhelm already widely used by the National Revolutionary Army, the official army of the Republic of China. The military forces of these puppet regimes, known collectively as the Collaborationist Chinese Army, numbered more than a million at their height, with some estimates that the number exceeded two million conscripts. Great numbers of Collaborationist troops were men originally serving in warlord forces within the National Revolutionary Army who had defected when facing both Communists and Japanese as enemies. Although its manpower was very large, the soldiers were very ineffective compared to NRA soldiers due to low morale for being considered as Hanjin. Although certain collaborationist forces had limited battlefield presence during the Second Sino Japanese War, most were relegated to behind the line duties. The Wang Jingwei government was disbanded after Japanese surrender to Allies in 1945, and Manchukuo and Mengjiang were destroyed by Soviet troops in the invasion of Manchuria. Topic: 
Topic: Czechoslovakia. With the German annexation of Czechoslovakia between 1938 and 1939, the country was divided. Most of the Czech part of pre-war Czechoslovakia was reconstituted into Bohemia and Moravia, a protectorate of Nazi Germany. The protectorate had its own military forces, including a 12-battalion government army, police and gendarmerie. The majority of the government army was sent to northern Italy in 1944 as labor and guard troops. Whether or not the government army can be considered a collaborationist force has been debated. Its commanding officer, Yaroslav Eminger, was tried and acquitted on charges of collaboration following World War II. Some members of the force engaged in active resistance operations simultaneous with their service in the army, and, in the waning days of the conflict, elements of the army joined in the Prague Uprising. The Slovak Republic Republika was a quasi independent ethnic Slovak state which existed from 14 March 1939 to 8 May 1945 as an ally and client state of Nazi Germany. The Slovak Republic existed on roughly the same territory as present-day Slovakia with the exception of the southern and eastern parts of present-day Slovakia. The Republic bordered Germany, the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, the German-occupied Poland, and Hungary. Denmark At 4.15 on 9 April 1940 Danish Standard Time, German forces crossed the border into neutral Denmark, in violation of a German-Danish Treaty of Non-Aggression signed the previous year. After two hours the Danish government surrendered, believing that resistance was useless and hoping to work out an advantageous agreement with Germany. As a result of the cooperative attitude of the Danish authorities, German officials claimed that they would "...respect Danish sovereignty and territorial integrity, as well as neutrality." The German authorities were inclined towards lenient terms with Denmark for several reasons which allowed Denmark a favourable relationship with Nazi Germany. The government remained intact and the parliament continued to function more or less as it had before, maintaining control over domestic policy. Danish public opinion generally backed the new government, particularly after the fall of France in June 1940. Prior to, during and after the war Denmark enforced a restrictive refugee policy and handed Jewish refugees that managed to get over the border over to German authorities. 21 such incidents are known and 18 of the people transferred to German custody later died in concentration camps, including a woman and her three children. In 2005 Prime Minister Anders Fogh Rasmussen officially apologized for these policies, newspaper articles and news reports, which might jeopardize German-Danish relations, were outlawed. Following the German assault on the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June 1941, German authorities demanded that Danish communists be arrested. The Danish government complied and directed the police to arrest 339 communists using secret registers. Of these, 246, including the three communist members of the Danish parliament, were imprisoned in the Horsrod camp, in violation of the Danish constitution. On the 22nd of August 1941, the Danish parliament passed the communist law, outlawing the communist party and communist activities, in another violation of the Danish constitution. In 1943, about half of the imprisoned communists were transferred to Stutthof concentration camp, where 22 of them died. On 25 November 1941, Denmark joined the Anti-Comintern Pact. On 29 June 1941 Frikorps Danmark, Free Corps Denmark was founded as a corps of Danish volunteers to fight against the Soviet Union. Frikorps Danmark was set up at the initiative of the SS and National Socialist Workers Party of Denmark who approached Lt. Col. C.P. 
Chrising of the Danish army shortly after the invasion of the USSR had begun. According to Danish law, it was not illegal to join a foreign army, but active recruiting on Danish soil was illegal. German authorities disregarded this law and began recruiting efforts and ultimately 12,000 Danish citizens volunteered for German army duty of which 6,000 were approved for service. After the war, it was retroactively made illegal to have served in the German army and many of the returning soldiers given long prison sentences. Industrial production and trade was, partly due to geopolitical reality and economic necessity, redirected towards Germany. Many government officials saw expanded trade with Germany as vital to maintaining social order in Denmark. It was feared increased unemployment and poverty could lead to civil unrest which would result in a crackdown by the German authorities. The Danish government and King Christian X repeatedly discouraged sabotage and encouraged informing on the resistance movement, an activity some were sentenced to death for, after the war. The structure of the Danish unemployment system meant that unemployment benefits could be denied if jobs were available in Germany and this practice was widely followed resulting in an average of some 20.000 Danes working in German factories through the five years of the war. In return for these concessions, the Danish cabinet rejected German demands for legislation discriminating against Denmark's Jewish minority. Demands to introduce the death penalty were likewise rebuffed and so were German demands to allow German military courts jurisdiction over Danish citizens and demands for the transfer of Danish army units to German military use. <inaudible> Estonia Although the Estonian self-administration did not have complete freedom of action, it exercised a significant measure of autonomy, within the framework of German policy, political, racial and economic. Thus, the directors exercised their powers pursuant to the laws and regulations of the Republic of Estonia, but only to the extent that these had not been repealed or amended by the German military command. The director's position was voluntary. The self-administration's autonomy enabled it to maintain police structures that cooperated with the Germans in rounding up and killing Jews and Roma and in seeking out and killing Estonians deemed to be opponents of the occupiers, and it was ultimately incorporated into the Estonian Security Police and SD. It also extended to the unlawful conscription of Estonians for forced labour or for military service under German command, the Estonian Security Police and SD, the 286th, 287th and 288th Estonian Auxiliary Police Battalions, and 2.5-3% of the Estonian Omikese Home Guard militia units approximately between 1,000 and 1,200 men were directly involved in criminal acts, taking part in the rounding up, guarding or killing of 400-1000 Roma people and 6000 Jews in the concentration camps in the PSKOV region, Russia and the Jagala, Vivara, Kluga and Lagadi camps in Estonia. Guarded by the above listed formations, 15,000 Soviet POWs died in Estonia, some through neglect and mistreatment and some through execution. France Main articles, Vichy France, Millis, Legion of French Volunteers Against Bolshevism, Legion Imperiale, and Charlemagne Regiment The Vichy government, headed by Marshal Philippe Pétain and Pierre Laval, actively collaborated in the extermination of the European Jews. It also participated in porajmos, the extermination of Roma people, and in the extermination of other undesirables. Vichy opened up a series of concentration camps in France where it interned Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, political opponents, etc. Directed by René Bousquet, the French police helped in the deportation of 76,000 Jews to the extermination camps. 
In 1995, President Jacques Chirac officially recognized the responsibility of the French state for the deportation of Jews during the war, in particular the more than 13,000 victims the Velle de Hive Roundup of July 1942, during which Laval decided, of his own volition and without being requested by the occupying German authorities, to deport children along with their parents. Only 2,500 of the deported Jews survived the war. The 1944 Battle of Marseille was another event during which the French police assisted the Gestapo in a massive raid, which included an urban reshaping plan involving the destruction of a whole neighborhood in the popular Old Port. Some few collaborators were tried in the 1980s for crimes against humanity Paul Touvier, etc., while Maurice Papone, who had become after the war prefect of police of Paris a function in which he illustrated himself during the 1961 Paris massacre was convicted in 1998 for crimes against humanity. He had been budget minister under President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing. Other collaborators, such as Emile Duwatin, managed to have important functions after the war. Duwatin was eventually named head of Aerospatiale, the firm which created the Concorde plane. Debates concerning state collaboration remain, in 2008, very strong in France. French workers at naval bases provided the Kriegsmarine with an essential workforce, thereby supporting Nazi Germany in the Battle of the Atlantic. By 1939, the Kriegsmarine's planning had presumed that they had time to build up resources before war started. When France fell and the ports of Brest, Lorient and Saint-Nazaire became available, there were insufficient Germans to man these repair and maintenance facilities, so huge reliance was made on the French workforce. At the end of 1940, the Kriegsmarine requested 2,700 skilled workers from Wilhelmshaven to work in bases on the Atlantic coast, but this was out of a total available workforce of only 3,300. This same request included 870 men skilled in machinery and engine building, but there were only 725 people with these skills in Wilhelmshaven. This massive deficit was made up with French naval dockyard workers. In February 1941, the naval dockyard at Brest had only 470 German workers, compared with 6,349 French workers. In April 1941, French workers replaced defective superheater tubes on the Scharnhorst, carrying out the work slowly but, in the opinion of Scharnhorst's captain, to a better standard than could be obtained in the yards in Germany. An assessment commissioned by Vizedmiral Walter Mathia in October 1942 of the potential effect of withdrawal of French dockyard workers considered possible after 32 French fatalities in an air raid at Karaman Submarine Base stated that all repairs on the surface fleet would cease and U-boat repairs would be cut by 30%. Admiral Darlin stated, on 30 September 1940, that it was useless to decline German requests for collaboration. In September 1942, Rear Admiral Germain Paul Jardel, commander of the French Navy in the occupied zone stated, We have a special interest in that the workers at our arsenals work, and that they work in the arsenals and not in Germany. From a practical point of view, French workers needed employment and could be conscripted to work in Germany as happened to nearly a thousand of them. A small number objected to carrying out war work but the majority were found by the Germans to be willing and efficient workers. The French volunteers would form the Legion of French Volunteers against Bolshevism LVF, Legion Imperiale, SS Sturmbrigade Frankreich and finally in 1945 the 33rd Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS Charlemagne First French, which was among the final defenders of Berlin. Brittany Breton nationalists such as Olier Mordrel and François de Beauvais had long-standing links with Nazi Germany because of their fascist and Nordicist ideologies, linked to the belief that the Bretons were a «pure» 
Celtic branch of the Aryan Nordic race. At the outbreak of the war they left France and declared support for Germany. After 1940, they returned and their supporters such as Celestin Lainé and Jan Goulet organized militias that worked in collaboration with the Germans. Lainé and Goulet later took refuge in Ireland. <inaudible> <inaudible> French Indochina On the 22nd of September 1940, an agreement was signed between Vichy and the Japanese, which allowed the Japanese to station no more than 6,000 troops in Indochina, and never have more than 25,000 transiting the colony. Rights were given for three airfields, with all other Japanese forces forbidden to enter Indochina without Vichy consent. Vichy signed joint defense and joint military cooperation treaty with Japan on 29 July. It granted the Japanese eight airfields, allowed them to have more troops present, and to use the Indochinese financial system, in return for a fragile French autonomy. The French colonial government had largely stayed in place, as the Vichy government was on reasonably friendly terms with Japan. The Japanese permitted the French to put down nationalist rebellions in 1940. The Japanese occupation forces kept the French Indochina under nominal rule of Vichy France until March 1945, when the French colonial administration was overthrown, and the Japanese supported the establishment of Empire of Vietnam, Kingdom of Kampuchea and Kingdom of Laos as Japanese puppet states. Vietnamese militia were used to assist the Japanese. In Cambodia, the ex-colonial Cambodian constabulary was allowed to continue its existence, though it was reduced to ineffectuality. A plan to create a Cambodian volunteer force was not realized due to Japanese surrender. In Laos, the local administration and ex-colonial guard Indigene indigenous guard, a paramilitary police force were reformed by Prince Fetserath who replaced its Vietnamese members with Laotians. <inaudible> <inaudible> French North Africa The German Wehrmacht forces in North Africa established the Commando Deutsch Arabische Truppen, which comprised two battalions of Arab volunteers of Tunisian origin, an Algerian battalion and a Moroccan battalion. The four units made up a total of 3,000 men, with German cadres. Greece. After the German invasion of Greece, a Nazi-held government was put in place. All three Quisling prime ministers, Georgios Solokoglu, Konstantinos Logothetopoulos and Ioannis Rallis, cooperated with the Axis authorities. Although their administrations did not directly assist the occupation forces, they collaborated with the German forces, creating armed, anti-communist, and anti-gangster paramilitary organizations such as the Security Battalions and others. Greek National Socialist Parties, like the Greek National Socialist Party of Georgios Merkouris, the ESPO organization or openly anti-Semitic organizations, like the National Union of Greece, helped German authorities fight the resistance, and identify and deport Greek Jews. It was also the organization Bund, with her leader Agenor Giannopoulos, who trained a battalion of Greek volunteers, who fought with German uniforms in SS and in Brandenburgers, German special units. About 1,000 Greeks from Greece and more from the Soviet Union, ostensibly avenging their ethnic persecution from Soviet authorities, joined the Waffen SS, mostly in Ukrainian divisions. A special case was that of the infamous Ukrainian Greek Sevastianos Faulidis, a fanatical anti-communist who had been recruited by the Abwehr as early as 1938 and became an official of the Wehrmacht, with extensive action in intelligence and agitation work in the Eastern Front. 
During the Axis occupation, a number of Cham Albanians set up their own administration and militia in Thesprotia, Greece, subservient to the resistance Bali Kombatar organization, and actively collaborated first with the Italian and, subsequently, the German occupation forces, committing a number of atrocities. In one incident, on 29 September 1943, Nuri and Mazardino, Albanian paramilitary leaders, instigated the mass execution of all Greek officials and notables of Paramithia. <laughs> <laughs> British Hong Kong Hong Kong was a British Crown colony before its occupation by Japanese. During the Japanese rule, former members of the Hong Kong police including the Indians and Chinese were recruited into a reformed police called the Kempatai with new uniforms. <inaudible> <inaudible> India The Legion Phrase Indian, or Indish Frywilligen Infantry Regiment 950 also known as the Indish Frywilligen Legion der Waffen SS was created in August 1942, chiefly from disaffected Indian soldiers of the British Indian Army, captured by the Axis in North Africa. Many, if not most, of the Indian volunteers who switched sides to fight with the German army and against the British were strongly nationalistic supporters of the exiled, anti-British, former president of the Indian National Congress, Nataji the leader, Subhas Chandra Bose. The Royal Italian Army formed a similar unit of Indian prisoners of war, the Battaglione Azad Hindaustan. A Japanese-supported sovereign and autonomous state—the Azad Hind Free India, was also established with the Indian National Army as its military force. See also Tiger Legion. Indonesia <inaudible> 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 Among Indonesians to receive Japanese imperial honours from Hirohito in November 1943 were Sukarno and Muhammad Hatta. Sukarno actively recruited and organised Indonesian Ramusha forced labour. They succeeded respectively to become the founding president of the Republic of Indonesia and vice president of the Republic of Indonesia in August 1945. Topic. Latvia In the days before the capture of Riga by German forces the deportations and murders of Latvians by the Soviet NKVD had reached their peak. Those that the NKVD could not deport in time before the arrival of the Germans were shot in the central prison. RSHA's instructions to their agents to unleash pogroms fell on fertile ground. After the entry of Einsatzkommando 1A and part of Einsatzkommando 2 into the Latvian capital contact between Viktors Arizs and Brigadefuhrer Walter Stolliker was established on 1 July. Stolliker instructed Arizs on that same day to set up a commando unit that obtained an official name Latvian Auxiliary Security Police or Arizs Commando. The group was composed of students and former officers of far right wing orientation. All the members of this group were volunteers, and free to leave at any time. The following day, on 2 July, Arizs learned from Stolliker during a conference that the Arizs commando had to unleash a pogrom that looked spontaneous, and these pogrom like disorders were to break out before German occupation authorities had been properly established. The Einsatzkommando influenced mobs of former members of Perkonkrusts and other extreme right wing groups began mass arrests, pillaging, and murders of Jews in Riga, which led to death of between 300 and 400 Jews. Killings continued under the supervision of SS Brigadefuhrer Walter Stolliker and ended when more 2,700 Jews had been murdered. The activities of the Einsatzkommando were constrained after the full establishment of the German occupation authority, after which the SS made use of select units of native recruits. 
German general Wilhelm Ullersperger and Voldemar Weiss, a well-known Latvian nationalist, appealed to the population via a radio address to attack internal enemies. During the next few months, activities of the Latvian Auxiliary Security Police was primarily focused on killing Jews, Communists and Red Army stragglers in Latvia as well as in neighbouring Belarusia. The group alone murdered almost half of Latvia's Jewish population, about 26,000 Jews, mainly in November and December 1941. The creation of the Arish's Commando was one of the most significant inventions of the early Holocaust, that marked a transition from German organized pogroms to systematic killing of Jews by local volunteers, former army officers, policemen, students, Izargi. This helped resolve a chronic problem with German personnel shortages, and provided the Germans with relief from the psychological stress of routinely murdering civilians. By the autumn of 1941, the SS deployed Latvian police battalions to Leningrad, where they were consolidated as Latvian 2nd SS Volunteer Brigade. In 1943, this brigade, which would later become the Latvian 19th SS Volunteer Division, was consolidated with the Latvian 15th SS Volunteer Division to become the Latvian Legion. Although formally the Latvian Legion was a volunteer Waffen SS military formation, it was voluntary only by name, because approximately 80 85 percent of personnel were conscripted into the Legion. Lithuania Prior to the German invasion, some leaders in Lithuania and in exile believed Germany would grant the country autonomy along the lines of the status of the Slovakia Protectorate. German intelligence Abwehr believed it had control of the Lithuanian Activist Front, a pro-German organization based in the Lithuanian Embassy in Berlin. The German Nazis allowed Lithuanians to form the provisional government, but did not recognize it diplomatically and did not allow Lithuanian ambassador Kazis Skirpa to become the prime minister. Once German military rule in Lithuania was replaced by a German civil authority, the provisional government was disbanded. Rogue units organized by Algirdas Klimitis and supervised by SS Brigadefuhrer Walter Stolliker started pogroms in and around Kaunas on 25 June 1941. Lithuanian collaborators would become involved in the murders of hundreds of thousands of Jews and gypsies. Lithuanian-American scholar Saulius Suzidalis points to the increasingly anti-Semitic atmosphere clouding Lithuanian society, and the presence of anti-Semitic LAF émigrés who "...needed little prodding from foreign influences". Overall, he concludes that Lithuanian collaboration was a significant help in facilitating all phases of the genocidal program, and that the local administration contributed, at times with zeal, to the destruction of Lithuanian Jewry. Elsewhere, Suzidalis has similarly emphasized that Lithuania's moral and political leadership failed in 1941, and that thousands of Lithuanians participated in the Holocaust. Though warned that UNTIL buttressed by reliable accounts providing time, place and at least an approximate number of victims, claims of large-scale pogroms before the advent of the German forces must be treated with caution." In 1941, the Lithuanian Security Police Lietuvos Sagumo Policija, subordinate to Nazi Germany's Security Police and Nazi Germany's Criminal Police, was created. Of the 26 local police battalions formed, 10 were involved in systematic extermination of Jews known as the Holocaust. The Special SD and German Security Police Squad in Vilnius killed tens of thousands of Jews and ethnic Poles in Panerii and other places. In Minsk, the 2nd Battalion shot about 9,000 Soviet prisoners of war, in Slutsk it massacred 5,000 Jews. 
In March 1942 in Poland, the 2nd Lithuanian Battalion carried out guard duty in the Majdanek extermination camp. In July 1942, the 2nd Battalion participated in the deportation of Jews from the Warsaw Ghetto to Treblinka death camp. In August–October 1942, the police battalions formed from Lithuanians were in Ukraine, the 3rd in Molodekno, the 4th in Donetsk, the 7th V in Vinitsa, the 11th in Karasin, the 16th in Dnipropetrovsk, the 254th in Poltava and the 255th in Mogilyov Belarus. One of the battalions was also used to put down the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in 1943. Lithuanian Territorial Defense Force The Lithuanian Territorial Defense Force, composed of volunteers, was formed in 1944. Its leadership was Lithuanian, whereas arms were provided by Germans. The purpose of the Lithuanian Territorial Defense Force was to defend Lithuania against the approaching Soviet army and to defend the civilian population in the territory of Lithuania form actions by partisans. In practice, it was primarily engaged in suppressing the Polish population and the Polish resistance. The LTDF disbanded after it was ordered to act under direct German command. Shortly before it was disbanded, the LTDF suffered a major defeat from Polish partisans in the Battle of Marijuana Osmianka. The participation of the local populace was a key factor in the Holocaust in Nazi occupied Lithuania, which resulted in the near total destruction of Lithuanian Jews living in the Nazi controlled Lithuanian territories that would, from 17 July 1941, become the General Bezirk Litauen of Reichskommissar. Ostland. Out of approximately 210,000 Jews, 208,000 according to the Lithuanian pre-war statistical data an estimated 195,000 to 196,000 perished before the end of World War II wider estimates are sometimes published, most from June to December 1941. The events that took place in the western regions of the USSR occupied by Nazi Germany in the first weeks after the German invasion including Lithuania, see map marked the sharp intensification of the Holocaust. <inaudible> <inaudible> Luxembourg Luxembourg was invaded by Nazi Germany in May 1940 and remained under German occupation until early 1945. Initially, the country was governed as a distinct region as the Germans prepared to assimilate its Germanic population into Germany itself. The Volkstuch Bewegung VDB was founded in Luxembourg in 1941 under the leadership of Damien Kreitzenberg, a German teacher at the Athenee de Luxembourg. It aimed to encourage the population towards a pro-German position, prior to outright annexation, using the slogan Heim ins Reich. In August 1942, Luxembourg was annexed and became a region of Nazi Germany, meaning that Luxembourgers were given the same legal obligations as German citizens. Luxembourgish men were conscripted into the German military. British Malaya The invading Japanese reorganised former British colonial police, and created a new auxiliary police. Later a 2,000 men strong Malay Volunteer Army and a part-time Malay Volunteer Corps were created. Local residents were also encouraged to join Japanese Army as auxiliary there was a railway protection corps as well. Topic: <inaudible> Monaco. During the Nazi occupation of Monaco, the Monaco police arrested and turned over 42 Central European Jewish refugees to the Nazis while also protecting Monaco's own Jews. Netherlands 
The Germans reformed pre-war Dutch police and established a new communal police, which helped Germans fight resistance and deport Jews. The Dutch Nazi party had its own militia units, whose members were transferred to other paramilitaries like the Netherlands Landstorm or the Control Commando. Dutch Jew hunters massively helped the Nazis. Thousands of Dutch volunteers joined the 11th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division Nordland, created in February 1943. The division participated in fighting against the Soviet Army and was crushed in the Battle of Berlin in April to May 1945. This was also the case for the 5th SS Panzergrenadier Division Wiking. It was involved in several major battles on the Eastern Front. SS Freiwilligen Legion Niederlande, manned by Dutch volunteers and German officers, battled the Soviet Army from 1941. In December 1943, it gained brigade status after fighting on the front around Leningrad. It was at Leningrad that the first European volunteer, a Dutchman, earned the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross, Gerardus Muiman. In December 1944, it was transformed into the 23rd SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division Nederland and fought in Courland and Pomerania. It found its end scattered across Germany. 49. SS Freiwilligen Panzergrenadier Regiment. De Reuter. Fought at the Oder and surrendered on 3 May 1945 to the Americans. 48. SS Freiwilligen Panzergrenadier Regiment. General Seyfart, however was split up into two groups. The first of these fought with Kampfgruppe Wieweger and went under in the fighting near Halb. The few remaining survivors were captured by the Soviets. The other half of General Seyfart fought with Korpsgruppe Teto and surrendered to the Western Allies. During the war famous actor and singer Johannes Heisters made his career in Nazi Germany, befriending high-ranking Nazis such as Joseph Goebbels and living in houses stolen from wealthy Jews. <laughs> Norway In Norway, the national government, headed by Vidkun Quisling, was installed by the Germans as a puppet regime during the occupation, while King Haakon VII and the legally elected Norwegian government was in exile. Quisling encouraged Norwegians to volunteer for service in the Waffen-SS, collaborated in the deportation of Jews, and was responsible for the executions of members of the Norwegian resistance movement. About 45,000 Norwegian collaborators joined the fascist party National Samling National Union, about 8,500 of them being enlisted in the collaborationist paramilitary organization Herden. In addition, Norwegian police units like the Statspolitet helped arrest many of Norway's Jews. National Samling had very little support among the population at large and Norway was one of few countries where resistance during World War II was widespread before the turning point of the war in 1942–43. After the war, Quisling and other collaborators were imprisoned, fined or executed. Quisling's name has become an international eponym for traitor. Topic. Philippines The Second Philippine Republic was a puppet state established by Japanese invasion forces. The puppet state relied on reformed Bureau of Constabulary and the Makapili militia to fight the local resistance movement and regular troops of the Philippine Commonwealth Army. The President of the Republic, José P. Laurel had his own Presidential Guard unit. When the Americans were closing in the Philippines in 1944, the Japanese began recruiting Filipinos to augment their losses. Most of the Filipino recruits were serving in the Imperial Japanese Army and were fighting actively until Japan's surrender. Poland 
Unlike the situation in other German-occupied European countries, where the Germans installed collaborationist authorities, in occupied Poland there was no puppet government. Poland as a polity never surrendered to the Germans, instead evacuating its government and armed forces via Romania and Hungary and by sea to allied France and Great Britain, while German-occupied Polish territory was either annexed outright by Nazi Germany or placed under German administration as the general government. Shortly after the German invasion of Poland, the Nazi authorities ordered the mobilization of pre-war Polish officials and the Polish police, the Blue Police, who were forced, under penalty of death, to work for the German occupation authorities. The primary task of the officials was to run the day-to-day -day administration of the occupied territories, and of the Blue Police, to act as a regular police force dealing with criminal activities. The Germans also used the Blue Police to combat smuggling and resistance and to round up Lepanka random civilians for forced labor and to apprehend Jews in German, Judenjaj, hunting Jews. While many officials and police reluctantly followed German orders, some acted as agents for the Polish resistance. The Polish underground state's wartime special courts investigated 17,000 Poles who collaborated with the Germans, about 3,500 were sentenced to death. Some of the collaborators, S.Z. Malkownicks, blackmailed Jews and their Polish rescuers and assisted the Germans as informers, turning in Jews and Poles who hid them, and reporting on the Polish resistance. Many pre war Polish citizens of German descent voluntarily declared themselves Volksdeutsch, ethnic Germans and some of them committed atrocities against the Polish population and organized large-scale looting of property. The Germans set up Jewish-run governing bodies in Jewish communities and ghettos, Judenrat, Jewish councils that served as self-enforcing intermediaries for managing Jewish communities and ghettos, and Jewish ghetto police, Judischer Ordnungsdienst, which functioned as auxiliary police forces tasked with maintaining order and combating crime. The Germans used the Judenrats to register Jews for deportation to ghettos, and the Jewish ghetto police, to disrupt Jewish resistance in the ghettos and to facilitate deportation of Jews to German concentration camps. Additionally, Jewish collaborationist groups such as Zagyu and Group 13 worked directly for the German Gestapo, informing on Polish resistance efforts to save Jews. Portuguese Timor Portugal was neutral during the war, but its colony Timor was occupied by the Japanese. Local militiamen were organized into black columns to help Japanese forces fight allies. <laughs> British Somaliland During the Italian conquest of British Somaliland, local chief A.F. Char offered his men to fight alongside Italians against British forces. <inaudible> <inaudible> Soviet Union Topic: 1939–1941 During German invasion of Poland and Western Europe 1939 Soviet Union presented a friendly stance towards Germany with Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact, joint military parades, a number of German–Soviet commercial agreements and cooperation of NKVD and Gestapo in suppressing of resistance on the occupied territories. After 1941 Following Operation Barbarossa Germany occupied large areas of Western Soviet Union, parts of which remained under German control until late 1944. Soviet collaborators included numerous Russians, Ukrainians and members of other ethnic groups which inhabited the USSR. 
The Waffen SS recruited from many nationalities living in the Soviet Union, and the German government attempted to enroll Soviet citizens voluntarily for the Ostarbeiter or Eastern Worker Program. Originally, this effort worked well, but the news of the terrible conditions they faced dried up the flow of new volunteers, and the program became forcible. Topic: <laughs> Central Asia. Although Turkic peoples had been perceived initially as «racially inferior» by the Nazis, this attitude officially already changed in autumn 1941, when, in view of the difficulties faced in their invasion of the Soviet Union, the Nazis attempted to harness the anti-Russian sentiment of Turkic peoples in Soviet Union for political gain. The 1st Turkestan Legion was mobilized in May 1942. The East Battalions contained between 275,000 and 350,000 Muslim and Caucasian volunteers and conscripts. Topic: <inaudible> Russia. In Russia proper, ethnic Russians were allowed to govern the Lakhet Republic, an autonomous sector in Nazi-occupied Russia. Military groups under Nazi command were formed, such as the notorious SS. Sturmbrigade RONA, infamous because of its involvement in atrocities in Belarus and Poland, and the 30th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS Second Russian. Ethnic Russians also enlisted in large numbers into the many German auxiliary police units. Local civilians and Russian POWs, as well as Red Army defectors were encouraged to join the Wehrmacht as Hilfswillage. Some of them also served in so-called Ost battalions which, in particular, defended the French coastline against the expected Allied invasion. The Kalmykian Voluntary Cavalry Corps was a unit of about 5,000 Kalmyk Mongol volunteers who chose to join the Wehrmacht in 1942 rather than remain in Kalmykia as the German army retreated before the Red Army. In May 1943, German General Helmuth von Panwitz was given authorization to create a Cossack division consisting of two brigades primarily from Don and Kuban Cossacks, including former exiled White Army commanders such as Pyotr Krasnov and Andrei Shkuro. The division however was then not sent to fight the Red Army, but was ordered, in September 1943, to proceed to Yugoslavia and fight Josip Broz Tito's partisans. In the summer of 1944, the two brigades were upgraded to become the 1st Cossack Cavalry Division and 2nd Cossack Cavalry Division. From the beginning of 1945, these divisions were combined to become 15th SS Cossack Cavalry Corps. Pro-German Russian forces also included the anti-communist Russian Liberation Army ROA, Russian, POA, Ruska Osvobodytelna Armia which saw action as a part of the Wehrmacht. On 1 May 1945, however, ROA turned against the SS and fought on the side of Czech insurgents during the Prague Uprising. Ukraine. Before World War II, the territory of modern Ukraine was divided primarily between the Ukrainian SSR of the Soviet Union and the Second Polish Republic. Smaller regions were part of Romania and Hungary. Only the Soviet Union recognized Ukrainian autonomy, and large numbers of Ukrainians, particularly from the East, fought in the Red Army. The negative impact of Soviet policies implemented in the 1930s was still fresh in the memory of Ukrainians. These included the Holodomor of 1933, the Great Terror, the persecution of intellectuals during the Great Purge of 1937-38, the massacre of Ukrainian intellectuals after the annexation of Western Ukraine from Poland in 1939, the introduction and implementation of collectivization. As a result, the population of whole towns, cities and villages greeted the Germans as liberators, which helps explain the unprecedented rapid progress of the German forces in the occupation of Ukraine. 
Even before the German invasion, the Naktigal and Roland battalions were set up and trained as Ukrainian battalions in the Wehrmacht, and were part of the initial invading force. With the change in regime ethnic Ukrainians were allowed and encouraged to work in administrative positions with the auxiliary police, post office, and other government structures, taking the place of Russians and Jews. Soviet citizens had a page in their internal passports with information regarding their ethnicity, party status, military rank, service in the Soviet Army Reserve, and information as to where they were to assemble in case of war. This document also contained markings regarding a citizen's social status and reliability, i.e., son of a Kulak, party or Komsomol membership. Soviet POWs who were able to demonstrate Soviet unreliability, i.e., non-membership in the CPSU, Komsomol or be of a discriminated class were quickly released from the POW camps. Often they were offered administrative and clerical positions or encouraged to join local police units. Some were trained as camp guards, while others were encouraged in some cases forced to enlist to fight in anti-Soviet military divisions. During the period of occupation, Nazi-controlled Ukrainian newspaper Volin wrote that the element that settled our cities Jews must disappear completely from our cities. The Jewish problem is already in the process of being solved, there is evidence of some Ukrainian participation in the Holocaust. The auxiliary police in Kiev participated in rounding up of Jews who were directed to the Babi Yar massacre. Ukrainians participated in crushing the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising of 1943 and the Warsaw Uprising of 1944 where a mixed force of German SS troops, Russians, Cossacks, Azeris and Ukrainians, backed by German regular army units—killed up to 40,000 civilians. The Ukrainian collaborationist forces were composed of an estimated number of 180,000 volunteers serving with units scattered all over Europe. The Ukrainian Liberation Army Ukrainian, Ukrainsky Vizvalny Visko Ukrainsky Vizvalny Visko, UVV was formed by the German Army in 1943 to collect the Ukrainian volunteer units that came into being during World War II. It was composed of former Ukrainian Hiwis, Ostbatayonin, and other Soviet prisoners of war POWs, or volunteers. Headed by Ukrainian General Mikhailo Omelianovich Pavlenko, the unit grew to the size of 50,000 by 1944 and peaked at some 80,000 towards the end of the war. The army comprised a collection of units scattered all over Europe. In April 1945, remnants of the UVV were attached to the Ukrainian National Army, commanded by General Pavlo Shandruk. On 18 September 1941 in Jytomyr 3,145 Jews were murdered with the assistance of the Ukrainian People's Militia Operational Report 106. In Karasin Ukrainian militia rounded up 238 Jews for liquidation Operational Report 80 and carried out the killings by themselves, similar to Sokol, where on 30 June 1941 they arrested and executed 183 Jews. At times the assistance was more active. Operational Report 88 informs that on 6 September 1941 for example, 1,107 Jewish adults were shot by the German forces while the Ukrainian militia unit assisting them liquidated 561 Jewish children and youths. On 28 April 1943 German command announced the establishment of the SS Freiwilligen Schützen Division Galizian. It has been accounted that approximately 83,000 people volunteered for service in the division. The division, was used in anti-partisan operations in Poland, Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. During the Brody Offensive and Vienna Offensive to fight the Soviet forces. Those that survived surrendered to the Allies and the bulk emigrated to the West, primarily England, Australia and Canada. Belarus 
In Belarus under German occupation, the local pro-independence politicians attempted to use the Nazis with the aim to re-establish an independent Belarusian state. A Belarusian representative body, the Belarusian Central Council, was created under German control in 1943 but did not receive any real power from the German administration and concentrated mainly on managing social issues and education. Belarusian National Military Units the Belarusian Home Defense were only created a few months before the end of the German occupation. Some Belarusian collaborators participated in various massacres of Jews and Belarusian villagers, however, most of these massacres had to be carried out by Baltic and Ukrainian collaborators because of a relatively small willingness of Belarusians to participate. Many of the Belarusian collaborators retreated with German forces in the wake of the Red Army advance. In January 1945, the 30th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS First Belarusian was formed from remainders of Belarusian military units. The division participated in a small number of combats in France but demonstrated active disloyalty to the Nazis and saw mass desertion. Caucasus. <laughs> <laughs> Ethnic Armenian, Georgian, Turkic and Caucasian forces deployed by the Nazis consisted primarily of Soviet Red Army POWs assembled into ill-trained legions. Among these battalions were 18,000 Armenians, 13,000 Azerbaijanis, 14,000 Georgians, and 10,000 men from the North Caucasus. American historian Alexander Dallin notes that the Armenian Legion and Georgian battalions were sent to the Netherlands as a result of Hitler's distrust of them, many of which later deserted. According to author Christopher Aylesby, the Turkic and Caucasian forces formed by the Germans were poorly armed, trained, and motivated, and were unreliable and next to useless. The Armenian Revolutionary Federation the Dashniks were suppressed in Armenia when the Armenian Republic was conquered by the Russian Bolsheviks in 1920 and ceased to exist. During World War II, some of the Dashniks saw an opportunity in collaboration with the Germans to regain Armenia's independence. The Armenian Legion under the leadership of Drastamat Kanayan participated in the occupation of the Crimean Peninsula and the Caucasus. On 15 December 1942, the Armenian National Council was granted official recognition by Alfred Rosenberg, the Reich Ministry for the Occupied Eastern Territories. The President of Council was Professor Ardashir Abagian, its Vice President Abraham Gilkondanian and it numbered among its members Garajan Nzhdeh and Vahan Papazian. Until the end of 1944 it published a weekly journal, Armenian, edited by Vikan Shanton who also broadcast on Radio Berlin with the aid of Dr. Paul Rohrbach. <laughs> <laughs> Straits settlements The British territory of Straits settlements became under Japanese occupation after the fiasco suffered by Commonwealth forces in the Battle of Singapore. The Straits Settlements Police Force came under the control of the Japanese and all vessels owned by the Marine Police were confiscated. Yugoslavia <inaudible> 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 Prior to being invaded by Nazi Germany, the Yugoslav government was working on forging a pact with Germany. That pact was rejected by Yugoslav anti-fascists, who guided by General Dusan Simovic demonstrated on 26 March 1941, and forced the government to withdraw. Angered by what he perceived as treason, Hitler invaded the Kingdom of Yugoslavia without warning on 6 April 1941. Eleven days later Yugoslavia capitulated. <inaudible> Bosnian Muslims 
The 13th Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Handscher, 1st Croatian, manned by Bosnian Muslims and commanded by German officers, was created in February 1943 and operated until December 1944. The division participated in anti-guerrilla operations in Yugoslavia. Topic: <laughs> Croats Anti Pavelic's puppet independent state of Croatia was an ally of Nazi Germany. The Croatian extreme nationalists, Ustase, killed thousands, around 100,000, primarily Serbs, in the Jasonovic concentration camp. The 13th Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Hanscher, first Croatian, created in February 1943, and the 23rd Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Kama, created in January 1944, were manned by Croats and Bosniaks as well as local Germans. Topic: Serbs. Serbian collaborationist organizations, the Serbian State Guard and the Serbian Volunteer Corps, the party militia of the extreme right-wing Yugoslav National Movement (ZBOR), had over 30,000 members and helped guard and run concentration camps and fought the Yugoslav partisans alongside the Germans. Most Chetniks in Yugoslavia collaborated with the Axis occupation to one degree or another in order to fight the rival partisan resistance, whom they viewed as their primary enemy, by establishing modus vivendi or operating as legalized auxiliary forces under Axis control. Some units engaged in marginal resistance activities and avoided accommodations with the enemy. Over a period of time, and in different parts of the country, the Chetniks were drawn progressively into collaboration agreements, first with the Netic forces in Serbia, then with the Italians in occupied Dalmatia and Montenegro, with some of the Eustace forces in northern Bosnia, and after the Italian capitulation also with the Germans directly. While Chetnik collaboration reached extensive and systematic Proportions, the Chetniks themselves referred to this policy of collaboration as using the enemy. Topic: <inaudible> Montenegro. The Italian Governorate of Montenegro was established as an Italian protectorate with the support of Montenegrin separatists known as Greens. The Lovsen Brigade was the militia of the Greens who collaborated with the Italians. Other collaborationist units included local Chetniks, police, gendarmerie and Sanzik Muslim militia. <inaudible> Macedonia In Bulgaria annexed Yugoslav Macedonia, the Orana was organized by the Occupation Authority as Auxiliary Security Forces. Albanians In April 1943, Heinrich Himmler created 21st Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Skanderbeg first Albanian manned by Albanian and Kosovo Albanian volunteers. By June 1944, the military value was deemed low in lieu of partisan aggression and by November 1944 it was disbanded. The remaining cadre, now called Kampfgruppe Skanderbeg, was transferred to the Prinz Eugen Division where they successfully participated in actions against Tito's partisans in December 1944. The emblem of the division was a black Albanian eagle. Bali Kombatar was an Albanian nationalist and anti-communist organization which collaborated with the Axis powers during their occupation of Greece and Yugoslavia. Their agenda was the creation of Greater Albania. Topic: <inaudible> Slovenia. The Slovene Home Guard was a collaborationist force formed in September 1943 in the area of province of Ljubljana, then a part of Italy. 
It functioned like most collaborationist forces in Axis-occupied Europe during World War II, but had limited autonomy, and at first functioned as an auxiliary police force that assisted the Germans in anti-partisan actions. Later, it gained more autonomy and conducted most of the anti-partisan operations in the province of Ljubljana. Much of the guards' equipment was Italian, confiscated when Italy dropped out of the war in 1943, although German weapons and equipment were used as well, especially later in the war. Similar, but much smaller units were also formed in Littoral and Upper Carniola <laughs> Germany Channel Islands The Channel Islands were the only British territory in Europe occupied by Nazi Germany during World War II. The policy of the island governments, acting under instructions from the British government communicated before the occupation, was one of passive cooperation, although this has been criticised, particularly in the treatment of the few Jews in the islands. These measures were administered by the bailiff and the aliens' office. One Jew from Jersey died in a Jersey mental hospital during the war, three who had come to Guernsey were deported to France and from there were rounded up and sent to a camp and died. Following the liberation of 1945 allegations against those accused of collaborating with the occupying authorities were investigated. By November 1946, the UK Home Secretary was in a position to inform the UK House of Commons that most of the allegations lacked substance and only 12 cases of collaboration were considered for prosecution, but the Director of Public Prosecutions had ruled out prosecutions on insufficient grounds. In particular, it was decided that there were no legal grounds for proceeding against those alleged to have informed to the occupying authorities against their fellow citizens. In Jersey and Guernsey, laws were passed to retrospectively confiscate the financial gains made by war profiteers and black marketeers, although these measures also affected those who had made legitimate profits during the years of military occupation. During the occupation, cases of women fraternizing with German soldiers had aroused indignation among some citizens. In the hours following the liberation, members of the British Liberating Forces were obliged to intervene to prevent revenge attacks. <laughs> <laughs> British Free Corps The British Free Corps, German, British's Freikorps, was a unit of the Waffen SS during World War II, consisting of British and Dominion prisoners of war who had been recruited by the Nazis. Research by British historian Adrian Wheel has identified 54 men who belonged to this unit at one time or another, some for only a few days. At no time did it reach more than 27 men in strength. Foreign volunteers <inaudible> Germany Although official Nazi policy barred non-Germans from joining the regular German army, the Wehrmacht, volunteers from most occupied countries and even a small number from some Commonwealth countries, were permitted to join the ranks of the Waffen-SS and the Auxiliary Police Schutzmannschaft. Overall, nearly 600,000 Waffen-SS members were non-German, with some countries such as Belgium and the Netherlands contributing thousands of volunteers. Various collaborationalist parties in occupied France and the unoccupied Vichy zone assisted in establishing the Légion des Volontaires Français contre le Bolchevisme (LVF). This volunteer army initially counted some 10,000 volunteers and would later become the 33rd Waffen SS Division, one of the first SS divisions composed mostly of foreigners. 
Following is a list of the 18 largest Waffen SS divisions composed mostly or entirely of foreign volunteers. Note that there were other foreign Waffen SS divisions composed mostly of forced conscripts. Apart from frontline units, volunteers also played an important role in the large Schutzmannschaft units in the German occupied territories in Eastern Europe. After Operation Barbarossa recruitment of local forces began almost immediately mostly by initiative of Himmler. These forces were not members of the regular armed forces and were not intended for frontline duty, but were instead used for rear echelon activities including maintaining the peace, fighting partisans, acting as police and organizing supplies for the front lines. In the later years of the war, these units numbered almost 200,000. By the end of World War II, 60% of the Waffen SS was made up of non German volunteers from occupied countries. The predominantly Scandinavian 11th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division Nordland Division, along with remnants of French, Italian, Spanish, and Dutch volunteers, were last defenders of the Reichstag in Berlin. The Nuremberg Trials, in declaring the Waffen SS a criminal organization, explicitly excluded conscripts, who had committed no crimes. In 1950, the U.S. High Commission in Germany and the U.S. Displaced Persons Commission clarified the U.S. position on the Baltic Waffen SS units, considering them distinct from the German SS in purpose, ideology, activities, and qualifications for membership. Topic. Japan The Japanese also recruited volunteers from a number of occupied regions and from among POWs. Topic. Jewish collaboration Though Germany was trying to murder all Jews in the Holocaust, a minority of Jews chose to collaborate with the Germans. The collaborators included individuals such as Gestapo collaborators Abraham Ganswich and Stella Kubler, concentration camp capos like Eliezer Gruenbaum, Judenrat Jewish Council members and bosses such as Chaim Rumkowski, and organizations such as Zagyu or Group 13 in the Warsaw Ghetto. Similar Jewish individual and group collaborators of the Gestapo operated in other cities and towns across German-occupied Poland—Alfred Nosig in Warsaw, Josef Diamand in Krakow, Zama Groger in Lublin. Around early 1940s, Gestapo has been estimated to have had around 15,000 Jewish agents in Poland. Jewish agents helped the Germans in return for limited freedom and other compensations, food, money for the collaborators and their relatives. One of their assignments was to hunt down Jews who were in hiding. One of the most infamous cases involved about 2,500 Jews being lured out of hiding and subsequently captured by the Germans in the aftermath of the Hotel Polski affair, in which Zagyu agents were involved. Jewish collaborators also informed Germany's Gestapo of Polish resistance, including on its efforts to hide Jews, and engaged in racketeering, blackmail, and extortion in the Warsaw Ghetto. During the war, some Jewish collaborators were executed by the Polish underground. After World War II, a number of others were tried in Jewish transition camps and in Israel, though none of them received sentences of more than 18 months' imprisonment. Topic business and industrial collaboration A number of international companies have been accused of having collaborated with Nazi Germany before their home country's entry into World War II, though it has been debated whether the term «collaboration» is applicable to business dealings outside the context of overt war. American companies that had dealings with Nazi Germany included Ford Motor Company, Coca-Cola, IBM, Brown Brothers Harriman & Co., and the Associated Press. In December 1941, when the United States entered the war against Germany, 250 American firms owned more than 450 million dollars of German assets. 
Major American companies with investments in Germany included General Motors, Standard Oil, IT&T, Singer, International Harvester, Eastman Kodak, Gillette, Coca-Cola, Kraft, Westinghouse, and United Fruit. Many major Hollywood studios have also been accused of collaboration, in making or adjusting films to Nazi tastes. German financial operations worldwide were facilitated by banks such as the Bank for International Settlements, Chase and Morgan, and Union Banking Corporation. Robert A. Rosenbaum writes, American companies had every reason to know that the Nazi regime was using IG Farben and other cartels as weapons of economic warfare, and he notes that, as the U.S. entered the war, it found that some technologies or resources could not be procured, because they were forfeited by American companies as part of business deals with their German counterparts. After the war, some of those companies reabsorbed their temporarily detached German subsidiaries and even received compensation for war damages from the Allied governments. Political collaboration The Vichy government in France is one of the best known and most significant examples of collaboration between former enemies of Germany and Germany itself. When the French Vichy government emerged at the same time of the Free French in London there was much confusion regarding the loyalty of French overseas colonies and more importantly their overseas armies and naval fleet. The reluctance of Vichy France to either disarm or surrender their naval fleet resulted in the British destruction of the French fleet at Mers el Kebir on 3 July 1940. Later in the war French colonies were frequently used as staging areas for invasions or airbases for the Axis powers both in Indochina and Syria. This resulted in the invasion of Syria and Lebanon with the capture of Damascus on 17 June and later the Battle of Madagascar against Vichy French forces which lasted for seven months until November the same year. Denmark's government cooperated with the German occupiers until 1943 and actively helped recruit members for the Nordland and Viking Waffen SS divisions and helped organize trade and sale of industrial and agricultural products to Germany. In Greece, the three Quisling prime ministers Georgios Solokoglu, Konstantinos Logothetopoulos and Ioannis Rallis cooperated with the Axis authorities. Agricultural products especially tobacco were sent to Germany, Greek volunteers were sent to work to German factories, and special armed forces such as the security battalions were created to fight along German soldiers against the Allies and the resistance movement. In Norway the government successfully managed to escape to London but Vidkun Quisling established a puppet regime in its absence albeit with little support from the local population. See also Blue Division Collaborationism Collaboration, Japanese agents and local elites in wartime China German-occupied Europe International Commission for the Evaluation of the Crimes of the Nazi and Soviet Occupation Regimes in Lithuania Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact Pursuit of Nazi Collaborators Resistance during World War II Responsibility for the Holocaust Notes and references Further reading Arad, Yitzhak. Belzec, Sobibor, Treblinka, The Operation Reinhard Death Camps, Indiana University Press, Bloomington and Indianapolis, 1987 Peter Supla Benson, Bjorn Lamnek and Stig Orskov, Maersk Manden og Magten, Politiken Boger, 2004. Maersk the Man and Power. In Danish 
Byrne, Ruth Bettina, Collaboration with Nazi Germany in Eastern Europe, The Case of the Estonian Security Police. Contemporary European History 2001, 10.2, 181-198. Christian Jensen, Tomas Christensen and Carl Erik Nielsen, Krijens Kobmand, Guile Dendel, 2000. The Merchants of War, in Danish. Chuev, Sergei Genetovich, Prokletai Soldati, Damned Soldiers, Exmo, 2004, ISBN 5 699 05970 9. Gerlach, Christian, Calculierte Mord, Hamburger Edition, Hamburg, 1999 Goldhagen, Daniel, "'Hitler's Willing Executioners", 1996 Hirschfeld, Gerhard, Nazi Rule and Dutch Collaboration, The Netherlands Under German Occupation, 1940–1945 Berg Publishers, 1988 Jeffrey W. Jones Every family has its freak. Perceptions of collaboration in occupied Soviet Russia, 1943 to 1948. Slavic Review, Vol. 64, Number no. 4, Winter, 2005, pp. 747 to 770. Kitson, Simon, 2008. The Hunt for Nazi Spies: Fighting Espionage in Vichy France. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. Klaus Peter Friedrich Collaboration in a Land Without a Quisling. Patterns of Cooperation with the Nazi German Occupation Regime in Poland during World War II, Slavic Review Vol. 64, No. 4, Winter, 2005, pp. 711 746. Williamson, Gordon 1994. The SS, Hitler's Instrument of Terror. Brown Packaging Ltd. Rubinstein, Joshua, Altman, Ilya, Arad, Yitzhak, eds. 2010. The Unknown Black Book, The Holocaust in the German-Occupied Soviet Territories. Bloomington, Indiana, Indiana University Press. Tomasevich, Jozo 1975. War and Revolution in Yugoslavia, 1941–1945, The Chetniks. Stanford, California, Stanford University Press. ISBN 978-0-8047-0857-9. Lidigard, Bo 2003. Dansk Judenrigspolitik's History. Overlever in 1914 to 1945. Denmark's National Lexicon. ISBN 9 trillion 788 billion 777 million 890932. Hoffman, Frank. 2015. Berlin Koreans and Pictured Koreans. PDF. Koreans and Central Europeans, Informal Contacts Up to 1950, Volume 1. Vienna, Prisons. ISBN 978-3-7069-0873-3. External links <inaudible> <inaudible>